Greetings viewers, Matt and I here bringing you another commentary. This one's been on my mind for a while now. Two years ago, I and my friend Mountart did a co-op commentary on the Pokeduber Mr. Cumbreon, who did a countdown on what he perceived to be the worst Pokemon in Galar. Sometime later, Umbers came along, did a commentary on our commentary, and we took a bit of exception with that. Now, I'm not covering this video because it involves me. In fact, Mountart and I agree in hindsight, well, the whole entire video was an absolute mess, and the only positives about it were, was that it was the first co-op either of us had participated in, and it had been fun while making it. Plus, I did like the editing Keyblade Master did for my intro in the video, so there's that. The reason I didn't cover the video when it came out, or put it on my worst of list at the end of the year, was if I had, it would have felt like I was having a knee-jerk reaction and being salty. However, after two Ganium did their video on it, I found that, yeah, I still have a few issues with it, and something I'll get to with my final thoughts. Like I've said, you can cover something old. As long as you leave your biases at the door, and have some actual criticisms, and boy howdy, will I try. Although, to be honest, I don't believe this will be my best received commentary of the year, and will be highly surprised if it doesn't get on Doodle's worst of list at the end of the year, even as an honorable mention. This isn't so much as to defend the co-op, as it is to explain the reasoning behind the points we made. So, with all that out of the way, let's begin. <laughs> Get Wi-Fi anywhere you go! Hold up! I hate this so very much. The music is loud as balls. Speaking as someone who suffers from tinnitus, audio this loud can be very painful on the ears. This is also a trend throughout the video, so expect me to bring it up later. Pokemon Sword and Shield, I can say are some of the most Pokemon games I've ever played. The cast of Pokemon in these games is actually very good to me. If I can be honest, I like the majority of these Pokemon. More like literally all of them besides 10. Even with the 10 I don't like, these Pokemon aren't even the worst Pokemon I've ever seen. There are much worse Pokemon like this stupid looking thing. The majority of the Pokemon in the decks have great designs and concepts behind them. I even the fossils are cleverly made despite how much Arceus hated them. But yeah, I think you guys know where I'm coming from. Where I'm talking about the not so Pokemon in these games. If you haven't heard the title already or haven't guessed it, I'm gonna be talking about the top 10 worst Pokemon in Sword and Shield. In the past where I have made worst Pokemon lists, it got brutal for some Pokemon. I can say what I will say won't be nice about some of these Pokemon because obviously it's a worse Pokemon list, but you won't see the amount of brutality like how I did with Electro Torterra. Which by the way, for all you Torterra fans out there, you guys know I'm not a huge fan of Torterra. I Torterra more than some Pokemon on this list though. It's not the worst Pokemon in the world. Anyways, about Torterra. Let's just get into what I think are the top 10 worst Pokemon in Sword and Shield. We aren't even at the first point yet, and I already found an issue. This part of Umbreon's video lasted over a minute, and it could have easily been sped up to a solid 40 seconds. I don't know what editor you use, but it's safe to say that there is an option to speed up clips in there. This is just padding out your video to an obnoxious degree. So, why didn't you fast forward? Oh well, I did it for ya. You happy now? Oh joy, he goes right into the list without giving any sort of criteria. Surely a good sign of things to come. Who died and made you the queen of countdowns? Because last time I checked, you don't need criteria for a countdown. Uh, you kinda do? Otherwise, the countdown is going to be a really confusing mess, and the person is going to come off as if they put stuff on their list for unrelated reasons. Now, yeah, Mr. Cat, a criteria. So, are Beth not catching that? <laughs> Coming up next is a Pokemon that may seem a little controversial, and that choice is going to be a bull. Now don't get me wrong, I love Wooloo and everything it stands for. The design, the cry, and of course the best part about it, the shiny. Dubwool though? Uh, this didn't come out the way I wanted it to. Like I was expecting more of a Tauros kind of ram, not a big fat fluff ball. I mean, it's a sheep. What would you expect it to look like? I was expecting it to look like Barack Obama. Patience, dear. Let's let it explain. The fuck did you just call me? Please don't kick me in the dick. I'm calling the police. Considering you skipped over our entire opening bit, this was in reference to a nerdier gag. Greetings, lost children. Melantart here with my friend, Nai Tidai. So as you already know from that opening bit, Nai here brought me a video from a Poketuber named Mystic Umbreon called the Top 10 Worst Pokemon of Sword and Shield. And I fucking hated it. So here we are. Now he might have intended for me to do this as a solo com, but I convinced him to do a co-op with me. Well, I am hoping to write the script and editing this thing, so I may as well be- <laughs> 
My back. Break the fourth wall again, and it'll be your dick next time. Our uh, fault for not fully understanding what Mystic was saying. I suppose we interpreted him saying this isn't what I expected, as this isn't what I wanted, and made the incorrect assumption that because Wulu is a puffball, its evolution would have naturally followed suit. <laughs> Speaking of Pikachu, up next is Morpeko, which I can safely say is my least favorite of the Pikachu clones. With this design, I feel Game Freak just took Pikachu's cheeks, eyes, and ears, and slapped it on with a black and brown color scheme. It looks so copy-pasted, and that's what makes me a little upset about this design. Pikachu clone design this generation could have been much better. I was expecting more of like an electric groundhog typing or something. To me, that would have been a much better idea. The typing of electric and dark was also reserved for one type of Pokemon that unfortunately didn't make it in the Sword and Shield, being Luxray. I'm not saying they can't give Luxray some kind of form in the future with electric and dark, but it's the premise of it should have gotten that dual typing first rather than Morpeko. Any citation? Not really. He just thinks Serapy with the three D models and creates someone else in the description before promoting himself. Well, anyway, you do realize that if what you're saying is true, then that would have been a horrible idea, right? Being an electric type means Luxray only has one major weakness: ground, which isn't affected by electric moves. If it were electric dark, then it would have four weaknesses instead of one: ground, fighting, bug, and fairy. Trust being mono-electric is a good thing for Luxray. Jesus, you're supposed to be a Pokemon channel and yet a scrub like me can tell you why that would have been a bad idea. Citation towards what? The fact he personally thinks that Luxray should have gotten a dual electric dark type in? Citations towards the typings of Morpeko? Citations towards Pepper Secret Hentai Stash? What are you talking about? Also, God, why do you commentators care so much about how well a Pokemon can survive a fucking tsunami? <sighs> okay, this is the point that a lot of people who checked my script argued about. Yes, you could argue that a dark type Luxray would have the major advantage against psychic types and ghost types. However, it would still face three major weaknesses in fairy fighting and bug type Pokemon, as well as ground. That is why we cared. We felt the cons outweighed the pros. Now let's hypothetically talk about the competitive scene. Ms. Magius and several psychic types are capable of learning Dazzling Gleam, a fairy type move that deals 80 points of damage. There are also psychic types like Cresselia and Gardevoir that can use Moonblast. Yes, I know you can max out a Pokemon's stats, but realistically, a dark type Luxray would be lucky enough to live two attacks from a Pokemon that knows a fairy move. <laughs> Morpeko doesn't deserve this typing. I don't think this is as harsh as I have been to other Pokemon in worse Pokemon videos, so I will consider this as mild. You can't be serious. Morpeko is bad because it has the type combination of a Pokemon you seem to prefer? What sense does that make? But I thought you said Luxray was a monoelectric type. Being an electric type means Luxray only has one major weakness. What was that? Yeah, just play it back what Mena was saying in response to Mystic saying that Morpeko doesn't deserve to be a dark type without refuting what she said that it's beneficial for Luxray to be a mono electric type. <laughs> Dreadnought is a Pokemon I haven't really been super fond of since the day I laid my eyes on it. At this point in time, in the Pokemon franchise, we have way too many turtle Pokemon. Turtonator was last gen, then before that Caracosta, and then Torterra. I think it's time to stop with Turtle Mons for a while. I agree! We need to stop having all these Pokemon based on the same type of animal a long time ago. Birds, fish, rodents, bugs. We certainly didn't need so many just based on one species. Your examples actually suck. Let's just ignore that every type of Pokemon you mentioned are Pokemon that appear in every gen. They're part of the series tradition, you nuns. Plus, there are a lot of things you can do with rodents, birds, fish, and bugs. And there are a lot of things you can't do with turtles, like what we go over in our video on Mystic. Torterra is based on the world tortoise. Caracosta is based on the soft shell sea turtles. Turtonator is a Matata turtle, and Dreadnought is an alligator snapper. Oh, look at that. Concepts for Pokemon based on turtles and tortoises. But, uh, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm just a big dumb idiot for responding to Mystic in a joking manner. An alligator snapping turtle is a neat concept, but couldn't we have waited another gen for something like this and for a better design? Dreadnought's face looks like a Bob the Builder paper shredder vehicle or something.
if you think either Dreadnought and that bulldozer look anything alike, you have a serious need for glasses, my friend. Girl, it was a joke. As was what Melon said. The joke is, ha ha, Mystic has such poor eyesight, he thinks an alligator snapping turtle and piece of construction machinery look the same. Yeah, you don't have to find it funny, but humor is subjective. I can also say Thwacky looks like it got rejected from Madagascar too. I guess he couldn't just move it, move it all that great. I can see why too, moving around in a costume must be hard, especially with two sticks in its hand. Oh yeah, I can totally see it. Never mind that Thwacky's green and has more of an anime aesthetic. Are jokes just some medieval concept to you? Who gives a sudden rat's piss if Thwacky has an anime aesthetic? What does that change? Umbreon's joke was that it looked like a Madagascar reject. Thwacky is green and drawn to have an anime inspired look. The cast of Madagascar are drawn in a western style and have the coloration of actual animals. Thwacky would stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah, it's a joke, but that doesn't mean it can't be criticized. Now I know people are gonna say, Well, then why did you give Miller a pass? Because she wasn't trying to make an actual point. Mystic, however, is. He's saying he perceives Thwacky design to be bad and drawing a comparison. Okay? I should not have to explain this to commentators. <laughs> So, one of my biggest reasons as to why I don't like Thwacky is because it wasn't introduced in Alola with past Simeon and Oranguru. This would have been the perfect Alolan Pokemon. If it debuted in Alola as a completely separate Pokemon, I would have had less of a problem with it. It's just the fact that you have such a great evolution line with Grookey in the final evolution, but the Pokemon in between just looks like it just doesn't belong. It's literally a separate Pokemon from this line. Go back in time, put Thwacky in Alola, then boom, our problem is solved. I mean, it just screams Alola. The facial features look like a Hawaiian mask. I can't be the only one who sees this. What? How? How doesn't it look like it belongs? The more this woman talks, the more my brain hurts. Well, that felt unwarranted. Just gonna put a pin in that for final thoughts. He literally explained why he felt that way. Are you deaf? Yes. And we decided his reasoning was dumb. What sense would it make to plug a middle stage starter Pokemon out of the evolutionary line and put it in the previous region? Mystic's only reasoning is he doesn't like the design of Thwacky. Do you not have years, young lady? Place. What the f? <laughs> Hey, remember this? What are TRs and where do you get them anyway? Don't do it my fucking points! Thanks, I didn't need my ears anyway. So it's bad when I have Melon a reverb effect while yelling at me. Despite me lowering the volume while editing the video. But it's perfectly fine for you to put in actual unedited ear rape. Yeah, the reason the tippy screen became a meme in the CC is because it actually hurts people's ears. And you've been around long enough to know that and should have lowered the volume on it when that clip came up. Or better yet, just not use a stupid clip at all. But you apparently decided, fuck if this hurts people's ears, I think it's funny. Not only did you leave it in, this isn't even the only example of ear rape in your video. God glasses, bitch! We know you're a nerd! Look like Bargy from Finny Se- Rookie, Thwacky, and Rillaboom are primate Pokemon with green hair, so of course they go together. You don't even mention what could be put in Thwacky's place since, a, you know, a starter Pokemon only has two stages of its evolution, it would be kinda awkward in comparison to the two lines that come after it. Alright, Miss if you can play this game. I don't think any member of the Quirky line should be in Galar. Nothing about any of them screams London to me. They'd all be better off as the starters, since all three of them have markings on their faces that look like tribal Hawaiian masks. Of course, there's the question of what we do with the rabbit line, since we've theoretically replaced them with these monkeys, but uh, why worry about that, am I right? Tell me where he said there'd only be two stages of the Grookey line or replace the Rowlet line. I said I don't think that the Grookey line looked like Pokemon. You'd find it in a region based on the British Kingdom and should instead be in Alola. This would be where we end the video, but we have Umbrus's final thoughts to go over. Oh, they're not in the video itself, they're in the description. My final thoughts that didn't make it into the video. Okay, so like, you two have been under my radar forever now and well. This video is, to put it bluntly, 
probably in my top 10 worst videos I've covered list if I ever decide to make one, specifically the top 5. Like you two are actually some of the most bland and uninteresting co-op partners I've ever seen. You two have barely any chemistry with each other and one of you is almost inaudible 90% of the time. I'm gonna try to address both of you, one after another. Starting with you Melon Tart, look, I get it, you're new. But this is, really, really bad. You seem to not really understand how to construct a proper argument so you either repeat yourself or take your target's jokes far too seriously. Again, you are new, so I won't go hard on you. With that being said however. Foxwell how in God's name have you been in the CC for about three years now and you still have a mic that makes me wanna hang myself. How do you get away with this? Your mic makes you incredibly hard to hear and YouTube subtitles don't even help when trying to decipher what you're saying. If it isn't your mic. Just. Learn to enunciate, please, it'll make it easier to sit through your content. As for you two working together, I think what you guys are missing is chemistry. I wouldn't mind you two having silly banter in a few interjections, it'd certainly fix this poor excuse for a co-op, that's why I kept memming on it so much. Speaking of which, I can't be the only one who felt like this commentary had more of Melon Tart than Foxwell. When making a co-op commentary with someone, it is highly recommended that you and your partners have equal screen time, it'd make the video feel like a genuine collaborative effort. I want to see the both of you improve, it's just that right now you two seem to be in a very iffy place. We lacked chemistry, huh? That honestly feels a bit subjective. Or do the parts where she bites my head off when I react out of fear of her inflicting physical harm upon me not count? I don't know, felt like a passable dynamic to me. And who says co-op partners need an equal amount of screen time in a commentary? Nas! Everyone in a collaborative commentary needs to speak in each and every interjection. Try to enunciate. I do that every single time I sit down to record a video. I do multiple takes in a recording like the one I'm doing right now to make sure I'm as clear as possible. Has it ever crossed your mind that I just might be monotone and you can't hear through it? To be fair though, I do have a habit of speaking rather quickly, even when I attempted to take my time. As for the mic thing, it's funny, I did try to get a new mic last year, but it turned out to be completely incompatible with my PC. So, it's either I get an entirely new PC, which means I would have to transfer files and re-download programs, or work with what I have now to the best of my ability. Also, what if the quality mic I have right now is the best I can afford? Like I've said, me and them don't really stand behind this video anymore. We dropped the ball. Big time. However, the reason your commentary pissed me off when I first watched it was whenever you weren't misunderstanding whatever points we were trying to make, it felt like you were throwing legit insults at us rather than taking jabs at us for making bad points. Yeah, insult comedy is not your strong suit. Unless you want to tell me what the joke is in calling me a nonce. For jokingly responding to something that Mystic said. Or that just listening to Melon talk was killing your brain cells. I've heard people say that a major flaw with your commentaries is that you tend to come off as condescending. And given the commentary you did on us, I can't say I disagree. Especially after reading your final thoughts. Me and Melon don't dislike you as a person, but we also didn't appreciate how often it felt like you just wanted to be a prat towards us. This commentary pisses me off, but it doesn't piss me off as much as when I first watched it. Aside from all that, my advice would be to actually listen to what all the reason that Shane are saying, so you can probably argue their points. You seemed pretty confused several times in the commentary about what me, Melon, and Mystic were saying, and even put my words in Mystic's mouth there. With all that said, this is Night Night Eye saying thanks for watching and share your thoughts with me.